Michael, it's cold. Um, what's that meant for training this morning? Uh, we'll probably have to go and train at uh, well, we will go and train at the 3G at Winchcombe School today. So just something you've had to do, we have to deal with it. The level where we're at, we don't have under so heating at training grounds or our own Astros. So it's been happened for years here, so it's not a problem. And I suppose more important that the players train at all rather than you know train on a surface that isn't grass. Yeah, well, it's just it's dangerous to train out there at the minute. So. Um, Lots of clubs train full time on AstroTurf now, so it's it, it, like I said, it is part and parcel of the game. A lot of the younger players grow up on AstroTurf these days, anyway, with the, in the academies. What's last week's comeback done for the players this week in, in training? Because I suppose you know it, it does just show how quickly you can turn things around, even in a single game. Well, I thought we were excellent after the first. Well, as soon as the second goal went in, I thought we were excellent. Now you can't really legislate for individual areas as we did, but I said after the game. Uh, Scotty Flinders has been excellent for us this season, particularly in the, the first Macclesfield game. So the player's got, he doesn't need to be told that he made probably two or three mistakes. But for the 70, 75 minutes after the second goal, I thought we were excellent because it's not easy to break 10 men down and we broke them down a lot. Um, and yes, we, we scored three good goals. The keepers had a really good game. Quite often, if you do a training session 11 against 10, quite often you, you hardly get a shot because they just bank in and it's difficult. So I thought we moved the ball well. I think Sol was quite complimentary after the game of how we how we did use the extra man. They had a couple of things go against them. But we got, it's up to us to take advantage of that, which we did. Obviously, the result somewhat overshadowed by events from the terraces. Have you got a message for the fans? Obviously, the club's had it say, but have you got a message? Well, you, you just don't want to see it in any walk of life. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't hear anything. Um, and I don't think Sol heard anything, but it's obviously something happened. So it's disappointing because we are a community club, we're a family club. We don't want that in our football club. So whoever it was, and I think the club have already made a statement saying that they will deal with it. There's a full investigation, and I'm sure anyone found guilty of doing any such doing will will be banned, quite rightly so as well. So it's you know as as a Dad to two young kids, you, you don't want that sort of language being used anywhere. On to Cambridge this weekend, and I suppose they've just you know ended a, a three-game winning run. Thoughts on them? Big game. Said in another cup final on the same points as us. Um, like you said, they got off the back of three three good results. So more interest in us than them. We need to keep trying to build what we're, we're trying to do. We know it's, every game's difficult in this league because there's funny results every week and I say it every week because there is funny results every week so it's two very very similar teams, points will tell you that so we need to build again from the momentum from last week ideally. Yeah and that momentum, is that something that you've been able to emphasise to the players this week? Not really, no um, because it's just another game so we we turned the game around last week, which isn't diff isn't easy. Sorry, after a difficult start, um, but you can only take it one game at a time. You can only do forty five minutes at a time. And you can can you do? We need to start putting two half together. That's that's the most that's the main message that's been told to the players this week. We, we can't keep turning up for sixty minutes, forty five minutes, and then giving goals away in, in in the poorer moments. We need to stay tuned in. You know, you won't always play well for ninety minutes, but we can still stay tuned in and not give sloppy goals away in those in those moments. You wanted two more players in when we last spoke to you at the weekend. You've got Jordan Tilson in. Um, presumably he's the sort of player who's going to fill that Nigel Attingana role that you haven't had since Nigel got injured. I think he fits the profile of what we're looking at um, because the market that we that we have been in has been you know, they're looking at first-time loans, young kids who are very good players, but you never know what you're going to get with a first-time loan. Or you're looking for players who haven't played at a club for three or four months, which is, you know, uh, Tyrone Barnett when we brought him in, that, that sort of scenario. So when Jordan came available, it's, he's played 25 games this season already. He's 25, he's got good legs, good energy. Um, I think he's played 70 games in the last two years. That's a team that's finished in around the playoffs. So I think he's... Um, and he's, and he's a good character as well, so the, he, he ticked every box for us, really. And presumably great to get him in at the start of the week, so you can get him uh, settled in with the lads and you know a few training sessions into him as well. Yeah, well, you get them in when you can get them in. It's not a there's so many plates spinning. That's the term I've used quite a lot because there is, and it's it's still going on. Um, 
well, I don't think we'll probably bring anyone in now, but there's still a potential for a couple, but it's highly unlikely. But there's been a lot of hard work goes into getting a player over the line. So we're, we're pleased with Jordan. Obviously, he needs to deliver. He needs to do well for us. But it's for regards to ticking boxes of what we need, it's he, he's ticked a lot of the boxes. Slim chances then of getting someone else in, but any chance of someone going out? Not today, I don't think, no. Um, there's been a couple of phone calls from a couple of people, but I don't think anything will be happening out, going out. Injuries, any change to the situation from last weekend? Uh, I think Johnny Mullins, we've just got to wait and see how he is. Uh, Jordan Forster's obviously got a, he's still on the protocol. I think he's going to be all right, but he's still following that. So if he has one day where he, he doesn't feel quite right, then that obviously goes back to day one. So um, other than that, I think we're, we're good. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Michael, you said you might, might not get anyone else in, but are there still potential plate spinning that if something happens, there might be a knock-on effect that you can bring somebody else in? Yeah, basically, there's there's always... You never know, someone might come in for a bit with one of our players, so there's there's definitely irons in the fire still, just what-if scenarios. I don't I don't think anything happened, to be brutally honest, but um, th there's still always a possibility. Yeah, you, obviously you're going to always be under certain constraints at a club like Cheltenham, but do you feel like you've been... Backed as well as you could have been during the transfer window. Yeah, it's. it's I, I got told quite a long time ago what the budget was. Um, it's been up to us to work within that budget. Um, so, I think the people that we brought in have been, like I said, you've, you've, Billy Waters has come in. He's a good age and maybe a little bit short of fitness. But Charlie Ragland's twenty-five. I know they're loans, but they're they're, they're good ages. They're they're not old ones or young ones. They're not first-time loans. Like I said, it's, there's been the potential to bring in 17, 18-year-olds, but we're not in a position where we can take a gamble. We need to save a pair of hands. Now, there's no, no guarantees that Jordan Tilson comes in and rips it up, but you're trying to go as, as safe as you can, really, without taking too many risks, because we're not in a position where we can take gambles. Yeah, and like you said, he's played a lot over the last couple of years in a team that's done well in this league. And he, he, he's been seen, he's been described as a bit of a late developer, but he does seem to have made a defensive midfield position his own after sort of starting out at the back, didn't he? Yeah, well, he, he, one of the things that we liked about him is like he was brought up as a centre half by trade, so he's he's got a defender's instinct, so he can snuff out danger. Sometimes he can he can sense danger, which sometimes more natural footballers who just want to get on the ball all the time they don't they have a, a glass half full scenario in their head where Jordan's got the glass half empty or all he might lose it there or he might do that so that's what we're hoping that he can go and break play up because we've got lots of good footballers I think everyone can see that uh, I think this, the, the, the brand of football that we are playing is expansive it is so you do leave yourself open at times but that's the trade off between 4-4-2 and just whacking it to them every time which we were early in the early part of my tenure so that's what we're hoping he can do he can he maybe give us a little bit more stability how far away is Will Boyle from, from coming back? Is he still a way off or is he getting close? Uh, he was, I think he's just had a little knockback as regards to not, nothing serious, but they've just had to sort of taper off his rehab because he was flying at one point and we thought, oh, he's going to be a bit sooner than what we thought. So uh, he's had a down couple of days, so we'll just have to see how he reacts from that. Yeah, there's been a few times where you've said what good lads there are here, but you've, sometimes the, the character in, in adversity has been questioned, but to come back from... 2-0 down. Um, I don't think Charlton have done that in the league this season, come back and win a game from a half-time deficit, so how pleasing was that? It was. It, there's lots of things that have gone on. Um, there was a real belief, I said after the game, the supporters could see the intent from the players, like you said. It's not often you see a ball go out of play and then one, of the, one, of the, one of the teams running to get the ball and putting it on the spot for the goalie. Running, so there was an intent and I think the supporters saw that and even in the last 10-15 minutes of the first half, we created numerous chances. So that's where the mentality is growing. You know, there is a, a belief from within. Now we've not won a game at home without keeping a clean sheet. Uh, sorry, with keeping a clean sheet, which is another thing we need, to, something we need to add into is, you know, every time we've won a game at home, we've had to score two because we conceded at least one goal. So that 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 can't keep happening. That's something that we need to try and amend.